Is there any fragrance better than lavender? I don't think so. I know it was my great grandma's favorite plant. She had little sachets of lavender in every cupboard in the entire house. Uh, my little sister, she studied abroad in Provence in France, southern France for a year. And she loved the smell of lavender so much that she got a nice tattoo on her shoulder. So last year when I moved here to Pennsylvania, that was easily one of the first plants that I planted here. I have so many awesome memories. Um, I know in my parents' house in Indiana, they have a beautiful area right by their garage that they have filled with lavender. So I thought, why not fill my area by my garage with lavender too? So look at this beautiful, this is a classic Grosso lavender that I planted last year and it has absolutely flourished here. Um, have a few more in this hot sunny bed. So what I did was I got some more lavender to plant up this fall. And um, right now I have a box full of this beautiful lavender. It's a brand new cultivar called Big Time Blue. It's a little bit shorter. Um, it's like shorter, but nice and wide. And it has really large blue, like really deep, rich blue flowers. So I wanted to kind of do a little video showing you guys some of the things that I've learned about having this lavender growing here, as well as how I kind of de decide where I want to have my lavender, where I want to plant my lavender in my garden. So the first thing that you need to know about lavender is it loves the sunlight. Down in Provence in France, the, the fields of lavender have no trees around. They're just fully baking in the sun all day, every day. And this plant, this bed, I should say, is in the most full sun area of my garden. You definitely need to give your lavender at least a half a day, like, you know, a very long morning or a long afternoon of sunlight, or better yet, full sun is the best. You know, surrounding your, your veggie gardens is a great area as well. Um, the other thing that you need to think about when we're growing lavender is they absolutely require great drainage. Now, this is kind of an elevated flower bed um, that has been artificially elevated, so the drainage is excellent. I never have any pooling of water. I never have any, like, puddling up. When I get heavy torrential rain, it comes, it the, enters, you know, enters the flower bed, but then it flows through. It's never sitting. So you don't want to plant lavender in areas that have wet feet, as, as my father loves to say. Um, so those two requirements are really essential. Now, depending on where you live, you know, some lavender may be more winter hardy than others. I'm living here in zone 7A, and so I have a kind of a pretty good selection of lavenders to choose from. Um, but this big time blue, let me see, I have my handy dandy instructions that came with it. This is hardy to zone 5A, so that's great. It'll be absolutely perfect here. So one way that you can kind of ensure that you're gonna get really, really good drainage is also by planting on slopes. So this, you can kind of tell this bed is full of slopes. Now I'm here in Eastern Pennsylvania where the deer are very, very prevalent. And out of all, you know, I have roses that are in shambles, hydrangea that has been eaten all summer long, lavender, A-OK. -okay. That's one of the thing, one of the reasons why I'm planting a lot more of it because the deer don't want to eat it. One thing that you can consider when you're planting your lavender, you know, number one, planting in masses is always going to have the greatest impact. I cannot stress that enough. If you're able, if you have enough space to plant like six plants in an area, you're going to have the most visually pleasing um, garden of lavender possible. I don't, I'm not a big fan of like dotting here and there. I like to get a nice full feeling. So that's one, one reason why I'm going to plant a bunch in this section. You don't want to crowd your lavender. So when you buy your lavender, assuming you're buying it from a respectable purveyor, they should provide you great instructions that show you the height as well as the width of each plant at full growth. Full growth isn't gonna happen that first year, remember. We're planting in the fall. It's not gonna be full growth by next fall either. It's gonna take like two or three years to reach that full maximum. Now, this big time blue 
It's a smaller variety, like I was saying. It only is gonna grow around 12 to 16 inches tall and wide. So we definitely wanna give it, I'm gonna say, let's see. I'm gonna give this around 16 to 18 inches between plants. So when we're going and growing, if I'm planting it here, it's gonna just nudge up against this rose and it's just gonna nudge up against this walkway. That's a pretty good spot. If I planted it right here, it's not gonna have enough root space on this side. It's just gonna kind of be a, a little bit too clustered. So we wanna appropriately space our plants from day one, all right? So let's go here. I like the idea of kind of going next to this rose. When I was saying planting a lot, you don't necessarily have to plant them all next to each other, but I'm, I'm talking in one area, having a few. It's gonna really create kind of a nice visual momentum, a really nice flow. And I think I'll save these for another area of the garden. Now, when we're actually planting, it's, I love to buy plants that are in flower because you're able to see what the color of those flowers are and you're gonna have an idea of how you wanna kind of collaborate colors in your garden, all right? That's why we love to buy plants that are in flower, but we don't plant plants with flowers on them. Does that make sense? So how do we do that? We cut them off before planting them. Why is this so important? Because rather than using all of the plant's energy to produce or maintain those flowers, it's now going to reassociate, re, um, it's, it's going to realign how it uses its energies and it's going to focus on creating roots rather than flowers. And that's what we want. For baby plants, we are really kind of thinking about root systems and we're not thinking about flowers. We're thinking about flowers in two, three years. We want healthy roots right now. So once we have our hole dug, Take it out, you can see beautiful roots. That is the sign of a healthy plant that wants to thrive, all right? So, but we never plant it just like that, nope. We take our fingers, we rip those roots up. This is gonna stimulate fresh growth much sooner, much faster. You can even do the same on the top. Then backfill the hole, as we are all very familiar, you can Reposition that mulch just like that. You always want to give it a nice fresh watering in, even if it's going to rain that same day. And there we go. If you've seen my video on how to prune lavender in the spring, um, it's a great thing you need to do the first few years that they have that they're trying to get established. If not, click the link and watch that video because it's really, really important, all right? But with those simple techniques, you can get lavender growing healthily, thriving, looking beautiful, producing beautiful flowers, helping the pollinators, and perfuming your garden with its fragrance. Thank you for watching me here on Plant Vibrations. Stay tuned with all of my video updates that I'm posting every single week. We're learning all about plants all the time. So thanks for joining me here and I will catch you soon. Ciao.